In earlier tutorials, we looked at simply supported beams, and we talked about how the shear force diagram can be used in order to determine the location and the magnitude of the maximum bending moment on a given beam. We also introduced the idea of cantilevers, where the means of evaluating them was slightly different, and we're going to expand on that a little bit more in this tutorial. We're also going to extend that theory to look at encastre beams, which are also known as fixed or built-in beams. But let's begin by discussing cantilevers, and what we have on the screen here is the picture of a cantilever beam of length L with a uniform distributed load W. And we can think of that load W as being the weight of the beam. The weight of the beam has been specified as 125 newtons per meter of length for that beam. Now before we do any calculations, the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is the support of the beam here. And what you'll notice is that the beam is built in or fixed. When we looked at simply supported beams, we imagined that they were sitting on a pivot or a support like so. And that would allow for a certain amount of deflection of that beam. If you can imagine as the beam bends and takes on this shape, we actually get some deflection at the end of the beam or at least the beam can take on a slope at the ends. But if we look at our cantilever beam here, which is fixed at the support, we can see that there'll be no deflection allowed. In effect, the gradient at that end of the beam must be zero, because the fixed support is preventing any rotation at that point. So this is the basis of understanding for encastre or fixed end beams, because what we'll actually have at that left hand support for this cantilever beam is a turning moment, and that turning moment is being applied by the support. It's preventing any deflection or any gradient at that point. Now, if we consider our shear force diagram first of all, the first thing we need to determine is the reaction at the support. So at the left hand support here, we're going to have a reaction force. And that reaction force R is going to be acting upwards like so, and it's going to be opposing all of the downward forces. Well, we only have one downward force, and that downward force is going to be the weight. And I'm going to use capital W for the weight, because at the moment we only know the weight per meter. So over on the right hand side, we know that the weight is the weight per meter times the length. Well, we have a weight per meter of 125 newtons, and we have a length of 2.3 meters. Therefore, the overall weight of our beam is going to be 125 times 2.3, which equals 287.5 newtons. Now, because the sum of the forces acting down equals the sum of the forces acting up, we also know that our reaction force is going to be 287.5 newtons. So if we refer to our shear force diagram, and if we imagine that we're moving left to right on the beam whilst looking left, then we have a shear force R which is going to cause positive shear. Recall that positive shear is when the left side is pushed up relative to the right side. So on our shear force diagram we're coming up 287.5. Newtons. Now as we move from left to right and we look left, we're going to be experiencing more and more of the weight the further along we go. When we move one meter along the beam, so somewhere around here, we're going to have experienced 125 newtons of the weight. When we move two meters along the beam, so somewhere around here, we're going to experience two times 125, so 250 newtons of weight. And it isn't until we get to the far end here that we're experiencing the full shearing effect of that weight. So our shear force diagram is going to take on this form like so. Now the construction of that shear force diagram is covered in more detail in earlier tutorials. In this tutorial we're just recapping the key points. Now when it comes to the bending moment diagram, we know that we have a bending moment M at the support. And because of the way this diagram's orientated, we need to imagine that we're stood at the support, but we're looking right. We need to take into account all of the forces that we see when we're stood at the support 
and we're looking right. And that will give us the bending moment at that point. Well, the bending moment at that point is going to be equal to the force times the distance to that force. So the force that we're referring to is W, and the distance that we're referring to is the distance to where that force is applied. With it being a weight, it acts at the center of the beam. So in this case, our bending moment is going to be the force W times the distance to where that force is acting. Well, the distance to where that force is acting is half of the length because it acts in the center. So we're going to get W times the length over two. Inputting some values, we get 287.5 times 2.3 over 2, giving us a bending moment at that end equal to 330.6 to one decimal place. Newton meters. The other thing that we need to be careful of is that that beam is going to be hogging. It's going to be taking on this shape here. Now hogging is actually negative. So our bending moment there is minus 330.6. We can add this to our diagram. We've got 330.6 downwards. And we also know that the bending moment at the free end is going to be zero. The reason the bending moment at the free end is going to be zero is because if we was at the right hand end and we were looking right like so, then no forces are causing bending. And once again, this is covered in an earlier tutorial. So we end up with a bending moment diagram like so. Okay, let's add a point load to our cantilever and we'll see how that impacts on our calculations. So let's clear some space. Okay, so this time we've added a point load P to the cantilever at a distance D from the support. And we've specified that P equals 460 newtons, whilst D equals 1.5 meters. Now our process for solving this is exactly the same. First of all, we need to find the support reaction. And for the support reaction, we know that the force pushing up at the support must equal all of the forces pushing down. So R at the support must equal the weight plus the point load. Now we said previously that our weight was our weight per meter times our length. Therefore, our support reaction is 125 times 2.3 plus the point load of 460, giving us a support reaction equal to 747.5 this time. Now once again, we can add that to our shear force diagram. We know that that force is causing positive shear. We know its magnitude is 747.5. And we know at the free end that our shear force is going to be zero. What we need to consider is what's happening in between. Now we know that we have a point load being applied at a distance of 1.5 meters. So if we're moving from left to right and we're looking left, then between the left hand support and the application of that point load, we have 1.5 meters of UDL. Well, 1.5 meters of UDL has a weight of 125 times 1.5, which is 187.5. So we need to come down at an angle, and the distance that we're dropping here is 187.5. Therefore, the point that that brings us to here is 747.5 minus 187.5 which gives us a value of 560 newtons. Next we have our point load, and our point load has a magnitude of 460. And that's going to be causing negative shear because it's acting in the opposite direction to R. So we would need to come down another 460, bringing us to 100 newtons. Now finally, as we move from left to right, from the point load to the end of the beam, we have another 0.8 meters of UDL. Now 125 times 0.8 equals 100. So as we would expect, we would continue coming down at an angle until our shear force diagram ends at zero. So as before, the key point here is that the maximum bending moment must occur at the fixed support. 
We know that our maximum bending moment must occur at the support because if we imagine ourselves at the support looking right, then that's the point where we'll see all of the forces acting on the beam. So the magnitude of that bending moment this time, we need to take into account the point load first of all, and the magnitude of the bending moment due to the point load is going to be its force times its distance. But we also need to take into consideration the weight, and the bending moment caused by the weight is going to be the size of the weight multiplied by the distance to where that force acts, exactly the same as previously. In effect, we're overlaying the impact of the point load on top of the impact of the weight. So we get 460 times its distance of 1.5 plus the weight, or the total weight we said previously was 287.5 times the distance to its point of application, the length 2.3 over 2. Therefore, the bending moment acting on this beam is. 1020.6 newton meters accurate to one decimal place. Now, once again, that's going to be causing the beam to hog. The beam's taking on this shape here, which is negative bending. So, if the beam's hogging, our maximum bending moment occurs at the support. The bending moment at the free end is going to be zero. We have a value of 1020.6 newton meters as our maximum, and zero at the free end, like so. So in this video, we've looked at cantilever beams. We've looked at how the maximum bending moment occurs as a result of the fixed support. And we've also seen how we can overlay bending moments that are caused by different forces. In the next video, we're going to apply these principles to our encastre beams.